Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at the Laplace distribution. The input parameters are mu and b. We'll talk about them shortly. A random variable a x has a Laplace distribution if the probability density function is given as follows. f of x, where that's small f, and the input parameters are mu and b. That is equal to 1 over 2b times the exponential of minus the absolute value of x minus mu divided by b. We can split that up into two components where x is less than mu. We can express the PDF as 1 over 2b times the exponential of minus this fraction here. The fraction is mu minus x divided by b. And when x is greater than or equal to mu, 1 over 2b times the exponential of minus this fraction here, x minus mu over b. Just as a quick remark, the spot the difference there, this is mu minus x, this is x minus mu. And then we negate it once we have the fraction worked out. Here, mu is the location parameter and b is the scale parameter where b is greater than 0. If mu is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1, the positive half line is exactly an exponential distribution scaled by 1 half. Now, the key thing here really is this if. If mu is equal to 0... In most of the cases, it actually will equal to zero. And if it's not equal to zero, we sort of adjust it so it is equal to zero and then just make the adjustment back after the fact. Okay? So the we, that's going to be zero, really, for all intents and purposes. Okay? Because it's a simple adjustment if not. Okay? So you just treat it as if it is zero and then you just work accordingly and then you make your adjustment afterwards. The relationship to the normal distribution, this, this is why we would actually study this. The probability density function of the Laplace distribution is also reminiscent of the normal distribution. However, whereas the normal distribution is, is expressed in terms of the square difference from mean mu, the Laplace density is expressed in terms of the absolute difference from mean mu. That's the absolute value coming into it. Consequently, the Laplace distribution has fatter tails than the normal distribution. So let's just sort of make a couple of remarks here. Before actually I'll continue, I'll actually just state, due to the presence of the absolute value function, the PDF of the Laplace distribution is an even function. Well, in this case, just one above, I'm going to sort of say mu is equal to zero. The Laplace distribution is a symmetric distribution around x equal to zero, and consequently we can say that the probability of x less than or equal to zero is 0 0.5, and the probability of x greater than or equal to zero is 0 0.5, okay? Or if you want to be fussy, you can sort of say x less than or equal to zero. Okay. So this is our question. A random variable x is called a Laplace random variable if its PDF is given as follows. So I'm deliberately sort of using different sort of structure, notation, and so on. That's just the reality of exam questions like this, that the notation is not consistent. So it's k times the exponential of minus lambda times the absolute value of x. Just as a quick remark, I'm going to tell you straight away that in this case, mu is equal to zero, which simplifies what we have before. So based on what we have before, essentially, uh, k and mu are some sort of, have some sort of relationship to b, what I've just shown you previously, okay? Anyway, where k is greater than zero and x is, take some value between minus infinity and infinity, and k is a constant. So what we have to do is find the value of k, then find the cumulative distribution function of x, and then find the mean and the variance of x. So it's important to revise integration uh, before you begin these types of questions. Let's look at the integral of uh, f of x dx. That is equal to 1. So that's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the probability density function with respect to x, that is equal to 1. That's essentially the core definition of what the probability density function is about, or it's sort of its main role in the analysis. Okay, so that's equal to 1. We know that the function f of x is an even function in this particular case. That's because of the role of the absolute value and also the fact that the uh, location parameter is 0. So what we could say there is that the integral from 0 to infinity 
of f of x dx is equal to 0 0.5. So we're going to use that on going, going forward, essentially. Now, sorry, I got a little bit jumpy there. Now, something to have ready when you go into the exam hall is integrations, particularly when they are concerning the exponential function, the exponential of x or the exponential of uh, some scalar times x okay so be ready with these uh so i'm not i'm you know essentially have these down don't be sort of dawdling in your exam hall have these down you might even be able to state them verbatim the these identities because you're going to be using them anytime you see the exponential function in a probability de uh, course okay so let's be ready with those we're going to pick pick one of these we're going to see a few of these actually quite a lot over the course of the, this presentation. I'm going to move on from it, partly because really you should be that good now that you be able to sort of follow what I mean, and that when I talk about these identities, this is what I mean, that I'm using something there. I don't want to spend too much time in it in this video, because really, this if you're not at that level, you, you shouldn't be looking at this video yet, okay? You're going to be going a bit too far. Okay. So part A, what we're doing here is finding what K is. So when X is greater than zero, we can simplify the PDF of as follows. Okay, K times E to the minus lambda times the absolute value of X, that simply becomes K times the, X, the exponential of minus lambda X. I'll just write it out here again. Uh, minus lambda X. Actually, I don't need that bracket there, do I? Okay. Now, so this is straightforward enough. The What we're saying here is that the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x dx is equal to 0 0.5. Okay. So when we integrate, integrate this expression here, that is equal to 0 0.5. So we can take k out of the expression there. So we have the exponential of minus lambda x dx. We're going to evaluate that from zero to infinity so e to the power of zero is one okay or minus zero even and e to the minus infinity is approximated as zero okay so working that out we should get k times uh, one over lambda okay so that's using the identities and just also i should have made a remark about those as well so 0 0.5 equals k divided by lambda. That means that k is equal to lambda divided by 2. Okay, that's good. That's how we start things off. And that is reminiscent of the 1 over 2b that we've seen earlier on, that, that fraction that we've seen at the start of the video. Okay, so this is now find the cumulative distribution function. So we have to do something slightly unusual here. So essentially what the cumulative distribution function is, is capital F of X and how we would derive that is using this identity here so what we do is just actually switch the variable names to something else other than X okay so we just put in u but ultimately it's a function of u instead of a function of X we just express everything in terms of u and what we do is we evaluate it as a definite integral from minus infinity or whatever the lower bound is to x and what we should end up with is an expression in terms of x which is what we want now this is the as tricky one particularly in the case of the laplace transform or the laplace distribution and the reason is that we have two cases where x is less than zero and then when x is greater than zero so we have to break this up into two parts okay this is actually the, the hard part, and it's probably what's going to likely come up in the exam, because you have to sort of think about this very carefully. So the best thing to do is break it up into two parts, and the first part is on the when x is negative, okay, less than zero. So in that case, when x is negative, that means the absolute value of x is equal to minus x. If you, if you think about it, what's the absolute value of a negative number? It's minus that number, okay? So... Let's employ our formula that we've just used there, or that we've just discussed above to find the cumulative distribution function. The from minus infinity, that should be actually, minus infinity to x of f of u du, 
Okay. So the what we have there is lambda over two times e to the lambda u. Okay. So what happens is that minus the absolute value is becomes simply u. That's essentially it. Now, so we could take lambda over two out of it and evaluate from minus infinity to zero of e to the minus lambda uh, e to the lambda u du. Okay, so it's very straightforward enough. Again, we're using our identities, and just watch out that it's not minus lambda u; it's lambda u. Okay, and we should get when we evaluate that integral e to the lambda x divided by lambda, okay? And we pre-multiply that by lambda divided by two. So what we end up with is the exponential of lambda x divided by two, okay? So that's the first part. The second case, where x is greater than or equal to zero, okay? In this case, the absolute value of x is simply x, and also we are gonna use this probability of x less than or equal to zero is one half, okay? So, f of x, capital F of x, is the integral from minus infinity to zero of f of u du. So split the integral up into two parts, the negative side and the positive side, okay? But, we know this already. So automatically, this whole thing becomes 0.5. Okay, so what we have to do is just evaluate that. 0 0.5, job done. If it's great, if x is greater than zero, we're automatically starting with one half and then whatever is left from zero to x, that's what we have to calculate. So we're calculating the integral uh, from zero to x of lambda divided by two times e to the minus lambda u du. Remember, or just be, pay attention to that. Now we have a negative lambda there, or negative power there, minus lambda u, okay, du. Again, we're using our identities. Uh, so take out, yeah, first off, we could take the lambda divided by two out of it, and then we get the integral from zero to x of e to the minus lambda u du, okay? Now this is a little bit co more complicated. Well, it's not more complicated, it's just you have to be a bit more careful here. When you evaluate that as a definite integral, you end up with minus the exponential of minus lambda x minus one divided by lambda, okay? Now the lambdas are obviously going to cancel out, okay? So we can re-express that whole thing as the integral of, of the part that's greater than u as one minus the exponential of minus lambda x divided by two. And then our old friend, the one half from earlier on, bring that into it. So what we end up with is one minus the exponential of minus lambda x divided by two. Okay. So really what the trick there was, was just breaking it, the whole thing up in the chunks, realizing that you can split it up into two and that you can automatically state your answer to this part as 0 0.5 and then just work on what is fairly, uh, ultimately a very straightforward definite integral. Now, it's a little bit messier than usual, not messier, I think that's a bit of a tough one, but you know, that part there, just, you know, it's not a little bit more intricate than you would hope for, usually when you're dealing with these sort of expressions. Anyway, that's what we get there. So that is our answer. So actually, really, I didn't really do it there, but really what I should have done is f of x equals one minus e to the minus lambda x over two and put in the other part e to the lambda x over two, okay? Where x is less than zero and where 
x is greater than zero for the other part really i should have done that and it was very remiss of me not to put that in but you actually state your answer properly like that okay now i obviously forgot to do it myself well i shouldn't have but there you go that's what you should have i should have done that's what you should do that is a cumulative distribution function of f x